Will democracy survive in the next couple of years? And essentially we are the same. And there are so many needs that Minnesota has. What people are saying they need right now. Access to Democracy is made possible in part by a donation from Firefly Credit Union. Firefly is the new name of U.S. Federal Credit Union, which has proudly served the financial needs of the greater Twin Cities community since 1925. At Firefly, we guide our members forward and give them the power to chase dreams by delivering the financial solutions they need to get ahead. From checking accounts to mortgages, we'll light the way. We are Firefly Credit Union, and this is life illuminated. By Thomson Reuters, providing legal professionals with intelligence, technology, and human expertise they need to find trusted answers. Thomson Reuters, the answer company. Online at ThomsonReuters.com. And Dr. Charles Crutchfield of award-winning Crutchfield Dermatology in Egan. Acknowledged as one of the nation's best physicians, a Minnesota native who trained at the Mayo Clinic, Dr. Crutchfield personally treats all patients and states that experience counts and quality matters. Crutchfield Dermatology, look good, feel great, with beautiful skin. Hello, welcome back to Access to Democracy. I am your guest host today, Holly Jenkins, and sitting here with me is a woman with one of the most important jobs in our community, um, educating our children. We have Dr. Polly Rakowski, who is the Egan High School principal. Hi, so Holly. Thank you so much for coming on. Nice to be here. Yes, well, I have to tell you that I was a little bit nervous. Um, sometimes I stumble on my words, and I, I don't always say exactly what I'm thinking, but um, and now I'm up against the inductee to the National Speech and Debate Hall of Famer. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> so, so don't make me look too bad, and if you have any tips, let me know after the show what I can do better. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a very strong advocate for speech and debate programs in high school. And explain what do you see the values in just that, that piece alone for students? You know, speech and debate are lifelong preparation. They change lives, there's no doubt about it. They changed mine as a very shy ninth grader when the debate coach came and got me and made me into a debater. I've seen it do, that. those programs do amazing things and they, the kids get skills that they can use throughout their entire life. Okay. Um, so still very involved mm -hmm. in that. In fact, tomorrow I'll be at the Minneapolis judging novice debaters. Wonderful. And uh, that's a lot of fun. Is it there, really are is. There, are there requirements that, child, that the high schoolers have to take? during their four years at Egan in terms of speech and? Yes, they have one trimester that is a speech course okay. that they're all required to take, but public speaking is, is in a lot of our courses. Mm -hmm. many, of the, many of the areas in the school have public speaking as part of their curriculum. Okay. So they're required to do one, but some do more than one. We have a college in the school public speaking course, which is part of the University of Minnesota where they actually get credits okay. at the U. And that's a Mm -hmm. Huge bonus for yeah, especially yeah. freshmen that to knock off some of those credits is a f right. helps with the cost. And um, let me ask you this: We know that uh, the speech, like you said, it's a lifelong skill, but kids don't always want to take it. Any suggestions for parents out there who want to inspire their kids and, and excite them to take? Well, I think speech they, and debate and mock trial and all these sure, great opportunities. Sure, or be on Egan AM or yes. any of those things where you put yourself into that most uncomfortable. We all know mm -hmm. it's. The greatest fear in citizens yes. everywhere is public speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like one of those things you have to get over, mm -hmm. you know, and the only way to get better at it is to do it. Right. So I think if kids understand, and I always tried to make sure when I taught the course that students understood everybody is nervous. Mm -hmm. Everyone can empathize with how you're feeling. So the more you get out there and try to be confident and well prepared, mm -hmm. the better it will go. And just make it part of your comfort zone instead right. of... because you're going to have to do it. No matter what job you get in life, mm -hmm. you're going to have to talk to people. Absolutely. And sell yourself and promote yourself. Mm -hmm. So, so you're involved, skill. still involved in speech and debate and, you know, the job of a principal. So you're involved with the still teaching or you know how much of your day is spent with students with staff with the administrators what's a day in the life like of a principal oh, that's at a really, high school? Yeah, that's a good question every day is different mm -hmm. it's never dull 
some days are full of lots of meetings and other days are out in classrooms watching teachers teach, observing, discussing, um, trying to evaluate how it's going. Okay. Uh, some days are more filled with parents, some days are more filled with budgets. It, every day is different. Okay. My greatest joy is being with the students and the teachers. Mm -hmm. And it's the reason I haven't moved out of a high school job and into a, like a district office type position okay. because I can't imagine being any further away from the students than I am already. Right. So, and, and you've been with the, a lot. And you've been with the Egan High School students since the beginning of Egan mm -hmm. High School. So Egan High School was opened in 89 to 90? 89 90, we only had ninth graders. Okay. And we were on the upper floor of Dakota Hills Middle School because that one got built on fast track. Mm -hmm. So we had sixth and seventh graders down below and ninth graders upstairs. Okay. While Egan High School was being built next door which meant a lot of noise and a lot of fire alarms and a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. But we made it through. We had about, I think, 380 ninth graders. Okay. And uh, they were a super group of kids. All the head coaches and department chairs had been hired for Egan High School, and they taught the ninth graders that year and coached them. All right. So even that year, we had students at state speech and debate. Oh, excellent. And All we right. had students at state other things as well, even though we only had ninth graders. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty amazing. Then in 90, 91, we had all four grades, and that was our first graduating class. Mm -hmm. And nearly all of those seniors came from Rosemount High School, which was severely overcrowded. Right, right. And uh, we got a few from Apple Valley, but most of them from, from Rosemount. Well, we've seen a lot of change in the years that you've been there, and it's a mm -hmm. Blue Ribbon Excellent School, several awards and national recognition, right. and you just mentioned a new one that, that just was received through, is it Newsweek? or I didn't even know they were doing this, but today is apparently <laughs> National STEM Day, okay. Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, huh. STEM. I didn't know that either. but I didn't know. It was, anyhow, they uh, came out with a rating of schools all over the country, top mm -hmm. 5,000, and uh, Egan is in the top 1,000 and in the top, I guess it was about 28 in the state. Fantastic. Yeah. And so STEM is very such proud a, of them. Has so much attention, and you weren't even striving to achieve that. It was just recognized. Just they look at what you're doing, they, they look at your programs, your website, your robotics yes. teams, your. Um, competition in science and math and yeah yeah it's and I great. know that technology has always been one of the strong focuses and of, mm -hmm. of Egan High School and yes. that doesn't just happen by itself there's been some right. a lot of planning around that and my predecessor dr. Wilson who opened the building mm -hmm. was devoted to the idea of technology and in fact hmm. spent a year looking at technology, um, going out to the West Coast and visiting with all the Silicon Valley people and really learning what was possible. Mm -hmm. So we opened as an Apple school um, and we were a demo school for Apple for the first four or five years. We had tours and all kinds of things going on where okay. people came to see what our students were doing. Yeah, um, Pretty cool. Yeah, very very cool. So we've been we've been very devoted to that right from the beginning. With it, that's excellent. And um, do kids even use textbooks anymore? They do. Is it? <laughs> yes, they do. There are still books. Okay. Uh, most of the kids get their books, take them home, mm -hmm. and have them as resources at home. Okay. During the day, they're really functioning with their iPads, mm -hmm. and we use uh, a school learning platform called Schoology, mm -hmm. where the teachers can put all the work and all the post everything, link everything, so students can work both at school and away. Okay. And uh, for the most part, they're working electronically at school with Chromebooks and iPads. Right. So technology, speech and debate, and I know arts is also a big focus that for Egan High School. Mm -hmm. And so yes. tell me some, a little bit about the arts program at Egan and how kids are able to um, right. fully take advantage of all the opportunities there are. We have so many things. Yeah. Uh, our band and choir programs are huge mm -hmm. and uh, busy. We had mm -hmm. a big band concert last night that lasted till after oh, nine. Yeah. And the kids were up this morning to go to state volleyball and got on buses at 7.30 so they could play. And how'd the game go? Great. Good. Great. Um, <laughs> You're was, heading to the final. It was really a challenging match. Oh, Minnetonka my. was a worthy opponent mm -hmm. and uh, we managed to win three out of five. So they play Saturday, November 9th at uh, 5 p.m. and okay. they're playing Wyzetta. Well, good. It's their luck. seventh state tournament championship game. Mm -hmm. We haven't won them all, but we're hoping to win tomorrow. Well, Coach the kids, always, the kids always look forward to those yeah. uh, 
I, I love how the school actually encourages the kids and they give them a bus right. busing to the to the uh, tournaments so yep. that they can cheer on their team and just right. have that camaraderie. So, so um, a lot of that's kids. fantastic. So, so band choir theater, yeah. a huge theater program right from the beginning. We had um, Denny Swanson came over to lead that uh, when the building opened mm -hmm. and uh, many people have worked with him over the years. We have um, two plays during the school year, full length plays. Mm -hmm. The second one is coming up in December. And uh, we do a big Broadway musical. We're going to do <laughs> South Pacific oh, the end of February, boy. so everyone can come and pretend they're warm. Well, and that's one thing that I don't know how you know people should know that these programs they're they're like professionally run shows. These kids do an amazing yes, job. And if you are just looking for some entertainment, um, boy. Head to your kids, mm -hmm. the high school productions especially. They're phenomenal. The bands, it's the, the best ticket price in town, yeah. too. Yeah, it really is. And not so. only that, the technical theater students do an amazing job. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are produced with such high technical. Yeah. Um, it, it, the kids are wonderful as performers, workers, builders. The orchestras are wonderful. Mm -hmm. We do a big uh, <clears throat> music and dance production every year called Encore. Okay. Yes. Usually sells yes. out. We do it like seven times. Mm -hmm. And that will be the end of April. And then in the summer we do a giant community musical where anyone can try out. Okay. And this summer we're doing Wizard of Oz. So oh. we'll probably have 150 people in the cast. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be huge. We do that probably 13, 14 shows Very in fair. July. And so you mentioned there is a low ticket price and does that usually just go right back to the to the programs themselves so that they can build the props. I mean, that doesn't get... Well, we have a budgeted process for the fine arts in the school district. Okay. So we have a budget for the shows mm -hmm. uh, to pay people to work them and to do what we need to do. That money from tickets goes back to the district to create the next year's budget. Oh, okay. So we okay. don't actually keep it in the building, but it, we get funded. All right. In the summer, the musical is self-supporting. Mm -hmm. So because we make it such a big thing, oh. uh, that ticket money comes directly into the program. I don't want to miss that. Yeah. Um, so speaking of funding, uh, we just had our, our week of voting, and the schools came out successfully with a voter-supported referendum. Yes, thank you um, very much. They well, did. The city of Egan, uh, the Egan community has always been, and District 196 has always had strong support. Yes. Do you have any concerns? Uh, you know, this should be a referendum that will go for a while. Um, Ten years. However, if if the community is aging, and uh, are you reaching out to sh ensure that people who don't have families, the school-aged children, are understanding what some of the benefits are to the community? I mean, mm -hmm. are you actively, um, what is it that we're doing so that these folks, I, I know the school of thought is that this will increase our property values, this will make better communities, but is that something, a message that you're consistently sharing with these other we families? We try really hard. The school district has a, a brochure called the Spotlight that comes out mm -hmm. five times a year, I think it's out, and it has huge amounts of information in it to keep people informed. And that's for everyone, not just school families. Every just, house, okay. every address that could ever send a child to our school if they had one mm -hmm. gets one of those. What do you think the main reason, just, just a sheer guess, that people would not support a referendum? Well, I think sometimes it's just money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's my taxes are high enough. Am I really sure I want to pay more? Yeah. But what we hear and what I've experienced through my own children buying houses, mm -hmm. everyone knows District 196 Homes right, is where right. they want to be. Mm -hmm. So our district has a very, very strong reputation for great schools. Yeah. And uh, people want, they want to live here. And our own graduates want to live mm -hmm. in the school district. So yes, do our homes have a greater value? I believe they do, mm -hmm. and I believe they'll continue to. We are seeing that, and I know Egan did a study on demographics a few years ago, um, we're seeing some of the homes starting to turn over mm -hmm. to younger families. You're starting to see neighborhoods that didn't have any tricycles on the driveways. Now suddenly we're seeing kids. Mm -hmm. So um, yes. it's good. And Our population in Egan certainly is an, a little more aged mm -hmm. population because, let's face it, most of the homes out here were built. 20 to 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we're starting to look around at our big homes and going, do I really need all this? Mm -hmm. So that's part of it, I think. Okay. Do you think that just uh, school districts in general, are they at a, you know, it different, different school districts have different wealth of populations, and right. so unless the state picks this up, it's a little bit 
right. unequal across the board. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, should the state be taking on a bigger role so that there's a little bit more equality well, across school districts, or this, is it? And the state spends a lot of money on education. It's one of their major funding efforts. Yeah. So I can't fault them for not supporting us. They certainly do. Mm -hmm. They have a limited amount of funds, too, and they have to spend it wisely. Right. But yes, I think all of us as individual taxpayers would love to see a little more of our money that we pay to the state coming out. Yeah. To public education and many other efforts. Absolutely. Yeah. Of well, course, near and dear to me is public education. But uh, a lot of us, and I'll be yep. one of those families that moved in part because of School District 196. Right. So we've been pleased as can be throughout the school right. years. My, my youngest is going to graduate this year, so we're moving out oh, good. soon. But, um, good, good. So Egan has so much to offer people. The communities are supportive. They're strong. But it doesn't mean that Egan High School doesn't have its also, uh, some concerns as well. And I'm just... Uh, curious if you can touch a little bit on some of the issues with, around vaping. Is vaping oh, one yeah. of these, like a national academic, and we're definitely mm -hmm. seeing um, concerns throughout our state. What's happening in Egan High School? Are you seeing this problem there? Is I, th it, yeah, I, think immune, we, I think we always knew e-cigarettes were out there, but mm -hmm. we didn't see very much of that. Tobacco, kids are not, that's not an issue with them anymore. Okay. But now that they've figured out a way to put nicotine into vapes, mm -hmm. I think the real change came when the Juul product came out, the little ones that look like flash drives. Yeah. Um, that's when the advertising came on televisions and newspapers and made it sound like the best thing that you'd ever come across. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, kids believe it must be okay or they wouldn't be advertising it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it's being marketed with the flavors and everything, it's bound to be more attractive. Right, right. So, yes, I think in the last year and a half, we've really noticed an upsurge. Okay. Um, started really working hard to figure out what was going on. Mm -hmm. And um, the major issue that, that we have is we don't really think the students understand or any young people understand the lifelong damage that they could be doing to themselves. Right. Um, and truly, even the scientists are having a hard time figuring out why we're getting the medical conditions. Mm -hmm. um, we had a group of parents this summer who helped us um, think about some ideas, and one of their efforts was to raise some funding for a couple of things, and they raised a bunch. So thank you to those who contributed. <laughs> Um, we now have vape detectors in some of our restrooms at okay, school, okay. Uh, so they alert us with a text when the vaping chemical is in the air and we're able to address it mm -hmm. and figure out what's going on. That helps because the bathrooms now are usable. Okay. The kids say, now I can use the restroom. Oh my. All right. So we've got that going on. Um, secondly, uh, we're bringing in a national speaker. Mm -hmm. in the first week in December, who is going to uh, address our entire student body in three different sessions. His presentation is called The Truth About Vaping, What the Manufacturers and Industries Don't Want You to Know. Mm -hmm. So he addresses a lot of things with why is this sold the way it is? Okay. What, what is in that little capsule? Mm -hmm. The fact that one little capsule of vape is equal to a pack of Marlboro cigarettes mm -hmm. And wow, a whole pack. A whole pack. Oh and gosh. students can go through a capsule in hours. Yeah. That's a lot of nicotine to put in your body. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing that December 3rd. There is an evening presentation for the community, parents, families, anyone welcome. What, what's the date of that? December 3rd. It's December a Tuesday. 3rd. Okay. Okay. And it'll be 7 p.m. in our cafeteria. Mm -hmm. and it's open to everyone. Mm -hmm. The students will have seen it during the day, but he'll address it with parents and family members in the evening probably in a slightly different way. We'll have a lot of information yeah. available. Do you think uh, right now there's a positive stigma around vaping that students envision that this is, you know, there, there's negative stigma around smoking, but vaping is cool? Is, that, is any of that happening or playing a role in I think in this? that's part of what made it so attractive, and it's pretty easy to, to hide. Yeah, okay. Right? But I'm really grateful that there's so much publicity about the negative effects because mm -hmm. I think that's helped more kids say, I'm not going to do that. Okay. I mean, we know that 25% of our students have said they have used it within whatever, whenever they survey them within the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's 25%. That's mm -hmm. a lot of kids. Right. Yeah. Any, uh, any thoughts on the 
vaping store that was just opened right there next to these schools. And you know, they're all over the place, aren't they? Yeah, um, yeah. My hope is that they're being very, very good about policing who is actually purchasing. Yeah, okay. Um, but of course, students can buy it on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, there's a U of M researcher who claims that students tell her they buy a uh, cash card at at uh, any store mm -hmm. and then go on the internet and order it from China. Well, guess what? You don't know about that. You don't know what's in that capsule, right, really. Right. So that's even more troubling. Okay. I'd like to see the age raised to 21. Okay. Definitely. Okay, I, think, I think we're overdue for not selling things like that to kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the adolescent brain is not fully developed. So okay. it would be nice if we didn't alter it with chemicals. Well, schools um, have taken on a much larger role than just teaching. We're now, um, you're really helping kids and even the, the mental health issues have yeah. risen and the schools are taking a larger role in children's mental health and mm -hmm. also uh, other types of physical safety. There's gun control measures um, that, that Egan High School and the surrounding schools have taken mm -hmm. and do, is, has there been, are there still regular active shooter alerts going on in schools or? Yeah, you know, with let's back up to the anxiety piece. Mm -hmm. We have more students, more young people, all grades, mm -hmm. who are anxious or depressed. And as a society, we're all scratching our heads over that one and wondering, is it just that we're more aware or is it the stress of how we live? Right. Is, it, is it the amount of social media that comes into their lives every day? Mm -hmm. It's probably a combination of a lot of things but anxiety and depression is a huge piece. Okay. Um, one of the things that you have to be careful is that we're not triggering more of that anxiety by doing really scary things with kids. Okay. So do we drill? Yes, we drill. But we don't run around the building pretending to be bad people and shooting guns. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, we don't do that. Okay. Um, they've found that to be extremely anxiety producing in adults and kids. As so I, say, I think of, just yes, talking about it board. makes your heart beat fast. Right, right. So we do drill, we practice, you know, doing every kind of thing, sheltering down, staying quiet, shutting off your phones, mm -hmm. leaving the building if that's the best route. The Egan police have come in with uh, SWAT people and drilled with our faculty more intensively. Okay. But not not as much with our students because it's just too frightening. Right, right. Uh, but even putting the faculty and staff through it, it's frightening enough. Mm -hmm. But we're we're as prepared as we can be mm -hmm. for for whatever could unfold. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping we never have to actually deal with it. Absolutely. But we hope to be thinking wisely if it could happen. Um, just to be prepared, but not um, over mm -hmm. over putting too much of a level of fear into the students. Obviously. Well, I don't think you need it's, to scare people to death in yeah. order to practice safe behavior. And, um, at least we have had the opportunity due to a, a voting issue from a few years ago mm -hmm. that we've made our buildings have safer entries. Yeah. Um, we've got check-in stations where people's driver's licenses get scanned and mm -hmm. um, doors are locked down except for those that are manned by a person. Okay. So all of our buildings, I think, feel more locked down than right. they were before, right. which, you know, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, it probably is one of those things that we didn't grow up with as kids. Yeah. It's, but it's it is sometimes hard to see. I'll come in to drop something off for my, my it's kids part of our and world you have to, mm -hmm. to do all this ideas and and um, and it's good that it's there. But it's also just it is a constant right. reminder for those right. of us who don't come into the schools every day. One of the other issues that's uh, very timely in our community, and I would um, be remiss not to not to provide my condolences for the the community of Egan for the loss of a student this week. Um, and it's led to, so I am, I am so sorry for the students and the families in this community. Mm -hmm. my, my own kids obviously went through this um, school program, but there's been so much discussion over the years on school safety routes. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and do you, do you have anything you want to say about that? Or do you think this will result in the changes that parents have been asking for mm -hmm. for a long time? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what the schools, I know the school district is involved in some of the decisions. How, how about the schools themselves? You're the ones now that are feeling the effects of, of right. this tragedy. Right. Um, 
you know, and Where does it go from here? It's easy for us to say, well, why don't you cross at the crosswalk? Well, why didn't it, that? All it of that is work, hindsight. Right. I mean, and, and kids are going to. There, this was a natural crossing spot where people this cross happened, where so people want to cross. So we know that in Diffley Road, especially as a county road, mm -hmm. and uh, it's posted at 45 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, I think we as school people would love to see that speed reduced and have it be a school zone with a lower speed limit. Yeah. Um, so that would be something we'd fight real hard okay. to help support with the city and the county in, mm -hmm. in mind. I think the residents will. Um, be there too because right. they've been asking I really for do. that for quite a long time. If it takes us a little longer to get somewhere, but we're safe, yeah. because it's a very highly frequented area, even in summer times and evenings, mm -hmm. because of the athletic fields and the shopping area and just people needing to run across and get a pop at, at a gas station. Right. You know, and, and, and not really wanna... thinking, wow, bad things could happen here. And it's pretty incredible because I, I it, District 196 offers busing, so if you're going to cross a busy road like that, we offer busing, yet parents and communities are striving to have more walkable communities, and, and at the very least, we want our kids to be able to safely and, and right. walk or ride the bikes to school. Right. It's healthier. It gives them fresh air. It would, you know, the more that we can promote that, the better our mm -hmm. communities will be. Right. And so if um, it's too early to say, let's hope there will be better days ahead, and right. I hope that that does lead to some long-lasting, um, long-term long school mm -hmm. so that we're doing more of this prioritizing um, walkability to schools. And I'm glad to hear that you feel the same way. Well, you know, if I were living south of the high school, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I wouldn't do the same thing. Say, right, let's, right. let's walk. Because it's not just students. It's uh, every, almost every morning you see adults out there walking their dogs and crossing the street. Absolutely. And so it's, it's an area that's used frequently. And so mm -hmm. the community, the schools, the elected officials need to just sure kind of all get on the same and people page when walk it comes into to events mm -hmm. you know oh, it's, absolutely. it's the, a crowded the programs that right um, come to a football game and watch how many people walk out of the neighborhoods mm -hmm. to get there so yeah we're we're hyper aware and unfortunately a week ago today that terrible tragedy is mm -hmm. it's just it's very, very very present with us people's yes family so um, we just have a, a little bit of time left. I just want to ask you, uh, you're feeling like we're doing everything we can for our students at Egan to prepare them for, the, for their adulthood, for their two-year programs, the four-year programs to come. The technical programs. Anything that programs. we're missing, anything that we can be doing better for Egan High School. Well, I think uh, what we hope is that we're always changing as the needs come along. Mm -hmm. um, more and more, I think we're seeing students looking at uh, technical programs not just two and four year. Yes. I mean, obviously most of us as parents want our students to do certain things and we have our own dreams. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, we have more students now looking at the technical schools and getting into the trades. Okay. So we're doing a lot with promoting that information, yes. giving the kids exposure to it, Wonderful. bringing in some of those people. Um, we have an aviation class that uh, brings in people to talk about all the aviation fields and the high need yeah. that's out there for pilots and mechanics and everything that's in that field. Wonderful so, to hear. I want to yeah. thank you so much for everything you've done to help our kids have excel oh, in welcome. high school and beyond. So thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. It's Good a joy. to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you.